correct me if I'm wrong, Sandra, but I believe the youngest ever member of the Gilas coaching staff. Uh, I'll have to do my fact check, but I'm pretty sure. everyone welcome back to another episode of the sports season podcast where we get to know the sports that you know about and those that you should know about so finally we're going to have a basketball episode for today but we'll be focusing a little bit more on the coaching aspect of the game so we're joined today by correct me if i'm wrong sandra but i believe the youngest ever member of the gilas coaching staff uh, i'll have to do my fact check but i'm pretty sure but it's kind of hard to beat to beat um you beat you right now Um, also a former UAAP Blue Eaglet and a former member of the Ateneo, um, Ateneo's Team Glory B and um, for uh, also the former student manager of the UAAP team, Mr. Sandro Soriano. Sandro, uh, thanks for being here. Happy to be here. Happy to join this. Thanks, bro. <laughs> so, um, you know, you, we've been in um, we've been this whole pandemic. I'm, sh- I'm, I'm sure you've been happy to be able to go out um, and to... To get to play some ball, but you know, uh, how have you been? What have you been up to aside from that? Well, aside from that, uh, so we we just had our we just ended our bubble last week. Sadly, in Aputol because you know uh, all the uncertainty of the schedule of the venue, you know stuff like that. But then this whole pandemic, you know, I was just looking at watching videos about basketball, you know, coaching. So from that. Like start new season, my first ever season with Talk and Text last um, October or August. So at least you know from that whole lockdown, I had to, I had uh, had the time to learn and to apply it after. So yeah, it was a you know pretty good lockdown for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, well, that's one of the, that's the reason I invited you because um, I'm, I'm obviously there's a lot of different personalities in basketball, but um, I think it's interesting to learn because personally also interesting for me, young tipong, you know, you may not have been able to play you know team A basketball, but now you're coaching at such a such a high level. So um, you know, I wanted to kind of get to know your story and get to know your thoughts on on the different things. So um, we'll start off with um, um, back in Ateneo High School. So the first time I saw you, because I think it was tryouts for I'm not sure what team, probably Siguro Pasarel. Um, yeah. and then I I mean I've saw I've seen your post about it, about your whole story, and um, you know, it's very accurate. Na you were this chubby kid, um, coming in first year, coming from the province, and honestly, I don't even remember if we formally met before. Pero because of the whole basketball community with Ateneo, parang parang automatically we we know each other, ne? So. Um, I guess I wanted to start out there and ask na parang um, it's not um it's not really a rare story um for for players from the province to come here to Manila um even from such a young age grade school high school so um you know the usual question you know what made you decide to to move to Manila and to pursue that? Well, I moved to Manila because my family moved here na so they moved here first and they were telling me to come here and study, play ball if I can. So basketball wasn't the priority at that time. But then, you know, uh, I got some calls uh, from different schools if I wanted to play for them. And luckily, you know, I uh, also got a call from Ateneo. They asked if I wanted to play for the high school team. So, of course, <laughs> you know, because I came from Ateneo de Iloilo, so... The transition to Ateneo de Manila, it wasn't that hard, you know, because I knew some of the coaches already, you know, Coach PJ, Coach Ron. Yeah. Yeah. I got to play against them before. Also, I got to play with some of the players, you know, Jolo Mendoza, Matt and Mike, Nieto. So, for me, it, it was an easy decision for me to make to transfer to Ateneo. You know, uh, was a new start for me I had to meet a lot of new people I had to interact more so that i could be able to gel with you know the people around me and but naman like through the years i got to meet a lot of new people made new connections and from that you know i it's like my new home already 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I I watched a lot of other podcasts with um people that would transfer to Ateneo High School. Because me, I, I came from I I was Ateneo from grade school all the, way, all the way. Um, and but my experience at least is when you guys come in before we get to know you. This is before we get to know you guys. Eh? Um, yung tipong when we see you guys, lalo na yung mga former varsities ng grade school pa kami, yung tipong, oh god, this guy is gonna get my spot, yung mga ganun. So, uh, I, I remember I was watching yung mga podcast, yung episode ni, I think, ni Sean, for example, he came from um, uh, Lourdes, di ba? So, I wanted to kind of dig into that and ask na parang, um, you know, what's it like um, adjusting to the to the new environment? And, um, was what was your role i guess before in in grade school like were you more of a scorer and then because in high school i'm sure you were clearly a more of a playmaker yeah so well at first pagkadating ko dito like in my mind i was really trying to prove myself that you know i belonged here i could play here and yeah like even when i first entered the ateneo campus I saw Gian Mamuya. He was the first guy I interacted with. And he was like, are you going to try out? I was like, yeah. And the first question he asked me after that was, what year are you? So, you know, there's already a competitive vibe uh, in terms of spots, you know, in the team. So from there, just played my game, you know. Uh, I was a scorer back in grade school, scorer, playmaker. And when I transitioned to high school, I was more of a playmaker, you know. I didn't score that much because I got to meet six, five, six, six <laughs> high school players, so it was hard. <laughs> but then, yeah, you know, uh, uh, just learning about the game, learning about how it's played here in Manila, it was a good transition for me, also. So, what what was the? I guess you you mentioned that the there's a difference, I guess, in, in terms of the game here in Manila. Can you explain what, what's, so, what's the main difference, I guess? It's more systematic here. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of sets, a lot of uh, principles here. Unlike, sa, you know, sa province, mga barabara, takbuhan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, okay. uh, before coming here, I've learned from my coaches back in Iloilo na Iba yung coaching jan, iba yung laru jan. It's more intense there. I mean, here, it's more intense here in Manila. So I did my research already. You know, I was ready for what's in store. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, clearly it, it panned out. You you got to play for the Blue Eaglets. And then um, I wanted to talk now about young experience but with um, in college. So you were, um, I guess, in a way, doing double duty as the the manager of the of the UAP team and the um and playing for Team Glory B. So, what was that like? Um, I guess balancing that and your experience in both. Uh, it was hard. It was tiring because you know you had school the whole day, then you go straight to practice at four p.m. to six p.m. for Team B, and then stay from six p.m. to nine thirty p.m for team A. But you know, uh, it's very fulfilling as well because you, you learn a lot. <laughs> you learn a lot. And in team B, uh, I played for four years for Coach Yuri Escueta. Uh, in my second year, I was the team captain already for team B. And you know, being a team captain and being a student manager as well helped me in you know, becoming who I am now. So very uh it's a very humbling experience for me to play for glory b to know what it uh to know what it takes to play for team a to understand uh how much hard work it takes to play in team a and serve just serving team a as a manager serving team a made me realize that to fulfill your dreams of playing in the uap you don't really have to play (laughs) you just really have to serve the people you have to serve Ateneo, which I'm really thankful for, you know, for giving me that opportunity to live out my dream in a way. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. For for those that aren't familiar, because um, there's only there's only I think four four team managers in the team, right? We have six. 
we grew. Six. We grew okay, uh, okay. throughout the year because of all the tasks to be done, you know. Yeah, yeah. So okay. from five we became six and then we became seven, I think. Yeah. Okay, so what um but what exactly are the roles of the of the team manager? Because I mean from an outsider's perspective, obviously it's very enticing. Na parang, you're gonna be close to the to the team, you know, the 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 champs. But like what are the what are the duties or like what what do team managers do? Um both before both during games and um I guess in, in practice. Uh so first us student managers, uh, we're the extension of the coaches. So every practice, every game, we make sure that everything flows as smooth as possible. So in practices, we we track stats that we need that are that we think are beneficial for our progress. We also make sure that our practices uh, flow well. So we end on time, and so so what we do is we track the time of every drill, and then we inform the coaches. Now, coach, let's move on to the next drill. And in games, uh, we make sure that once the players and coaches arrive in the venue, they just have to focus on the game and nothing else. We take care of setting up the dugout, um, getting ready for mass, making sure their uniforms are ready, making sure that they're wearing the same color of socks. <laughs> and uh, the snacks, if they're hungry, the snacks are ready for them. Uh, during the games, we also track uh, advanced stats and inform the coaches what we're lacking. So okay, how does you you were mentioning the, with the advanced stats and everything? So I think that's the most um, relevant that I get to the to the in-game experience. So um, I guess how much of it is something that you can learn on the job? Yung tipong, for example, obviously you no problem because we've been playing basketball since we were kids and we we know the game and everything. But how does someone, for example, can someone who doesn't really know or doesn't know anything about basketball come in and learn this kind of stuff and get to know it relatively easy? Yeah, because, you know, during the game, sometimes it's the girls who do it, the mm. girls, student managers, the females. So, we, you know, we trained them day in and day out throughout the summer how to track it also. So that if we're not there, if we're not available during games or during practices, they can handle it. Naman. So, yeah, uh, I teach them. Parang... I go to the court, teach them, teach them what a deflection is, you know, what a rebound mm. touch is. So, like after a month, they get it already, na, and they like they do it, na. Yeah. They do the stats for us, na. So after that, yeah. Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier with the um, I I, I like what you mentioned earlier about the, but you don't have to, tamo, you don't have to be a player exactly to to be a champion or something like that, right? So. Um, when I'm sure when you were a kid like me, you always imagine winning a championship, with with the in the UAAP. So, when you actually got that as a manager, do you would you say that it was it was the same feeling, um, that you were always imagining as a kid? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, uh, I know you've been watching the from season the championship from seventy one to season seventy five. So like. Being a part of that kind of history, it's it's crazy. It's amazing. It's it was the best feeling of my life, you know, winning those championships, uh, seeing that all the hard work uh, the coaches put in, the players put in, and us managers put in as well, uh, paying dividends for us. It's it's a great feeling. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. So. Um, I'm sure you know now that you're you're serving on the coaching staff of of all these um successful amazing teams. Um, being a having played before, obviously it's a it's a it's a big advantage or it, it helps you a lot. But do you think um being a manager um contributed in any way to to how you're performing or how you will perform as a coach? Yeah, because uh during my time as a manager, I made sure that uh, our team, our manager team. Uh, we were always ready for whatever was asked from us. And um, we also got first-hand experience, you know, how the coaches prepared, uh, how the players prepared as well. So just seeing that, you get the perspective of, you know, how a winning tradition, a winning culture should be. From that, you build up from that. You know, you have the foundation. You just have to put some stuff 
stuff on it so that you can progress. Okay. Um, so now we'll move on to I guess yung, yung main part. Nga. This is about the it's about the coaching. Um I wanna know first what was the I don't know if there was like a certain event or certain occurrence that happened, but you know, when was it when was the moment that you decided na parang, parang I wanna I wanna be a coach? Like this is something I wanna do, I guess need one forever, but like you know, this is something I wanna do when I graduate. Well, uh, it all started when you know, I was a student manager and I was also playing for Team B as well, diba. Right? So what I learned from the Team A practice, I'd teach some of the Team B guys. You know, Coach Yuri would also ask me, what, like, ano ulit yung tinuro ni Coach Tab? I'd mm. tell him na what to do. And that, so from that, parang, during my fourth year, a, a lot of players were coming in, a lot of new players were coming in. So I asked Coach Yuri, Coach Yuri, is, uh, is it okay if I can just help you from the sidelines uh, in coaching? Without uh without any hesitation, it's like yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then, uh, I started coaching in Ateneo when, uh, the team A left for the training camp in Greece, and then team B had a league, uh, had a three on three league here. So Coach Rui was with team A already, so I had to handle the team B. Okay. So we were up against I guess thirty schools. Yeah. So three on three league na yon. And then we had two teams. Team uh team B had two teams. So we made the final four. We made the final four. One team uh they made it to the finals, but we lost the FEU. Uh the second team placed third. So yeah. from there I told Coach Yuris, Coach Yuris, uh Sayang, uh we almost won it, but sayang lang talaga. But then uh, he told he told the management, the coaching staff, uh, they were really proud of what we did as a team. You know what our players did, and they also thanked me. Na parang you're doing a good job. You're doing a great job. Just learn from this. And just build build up from this. So from there, Ateneo, and then. After winning our third championship, season 81, I got a message from Coach Sandy if okay. I was available to help talk and text uh, for their stats during games mm. and in practices. So without hesitation, I of course, Coach, anytime. For sure, for sure. <laughs> and of course, like getting that text, getting that text palang, parang, so I'm excited. Ako eh. That's a PBA team, you know. Even just watching that on the TV, tagal na. Just like that, you'll work for them again. For sure, coach. I'll help you. And then from there, uh, I got called up for Gilas to be assigned as the statistician, you know, statistician and video uh, editor. So, yeah. Uh, it all went by so fast. <laughs> okay, so wait, you you mentioned that you were coaching the team B with without Coach Yuri. So, without uh, as in like alone? Yeah, I was the only one coaching them. <laughs> okay, so this was not uh, you didn't graduate yet by this time. Not yet. Um, just waiting now. I'm waiting. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Wild. Okay. Um. So okay, you explained that and how you got with um talk and text with um Gilas. Um you you talked about how um you could it it you don't have to be a player um to to be a champion with Ateneo. Um in this scenario, Naman, you you I'm sure you dreamt also of you know being in Gilas, playing for Gilas, but now you got to experience that um but as a coach. So could you explain parang, what that feeling was like, what that experience was like? Oh, uh, so for sure it was a it was an amazing feeling first because you know you're representing the country and you know just knowing who was part of Gilas that the team that beat Korea everyone Jason Castro whoever you know 
it's always a privilege to be part of that special group to represent the country and you know add add, add some time to you know uh to celebrate with my friends uh, i was part of gilas but then i knew that i had a job to do we ha- we had a job to finish as well we had to win that game against indonesia and you know through hard work and through preparation we did it okay um I, i've been watching a lot of you know, other interviews like see mike reyes has a i'm a really big fan of his i know so he's been talking to his you know, his channel so he's been talking to a lot of players so i kind of wanted to ask um some similar questions then for you now um you know you're you're Um, you are still with the Guinness program. I think you were in the past bubble. So who are you, I guess, closest to in the group, um, both in th- both with the coaches and with the players? Well, so coaches, for sure, it's Coach Yuri Escoeta. <laughs> uh, I've been working with him for five years now because he yeah. was my coach in the juniors before when I still played for... Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was his assistant. Uh, fourth year college. This is our third year now working. Uh, third year. It's our second year now working together with uh talk and text also, and you know we we always bonded. Hindi na parang hindi na parang coach, but as a friend as well. You know he's mm-hmm. one of my best friends in the bubble. Uh, and he's been a great mentor for me. Uh, ever since, you know, I've been looking up to him since I was still in Iloilo, you know, seeing him wearing that end one head headband <laughs> when he was still playing for the Blue Eagles. Yeah, yeah. I want to know this guy. He's cool. <laughs> cool enough. Coach is a really cool guy. Love that guy. Love that coach. Yeah. <laughs> And for the players, well, aside from the Ateneo guys. Of course, uh, of course. <laughs> I really got to bond with uh, Manong, Kiefer, Kiefer Abena, okay. because we're both Ilonggo, and uh, ever since, you know, I've been his idol, and he's been, we had, we, we've had some talks in the bubble, you know, just one-on-one, just learning about his perspective, he's been teaching me some tips and tricks on the court as well, so, you know, Just learning from him, learning from him, uh, just talking to him. It's it's different, you know. It's not like you're in a dream. You're not in a dream, but you're. It's reality now. You get to yeah. work with your idols, and you get to serve them as well as a coach. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I'm sure you know that experience has come from the the recent bubble. So I wanted to. Kind of get to know, you know, parang what's what's it been like in the bubble? Like, what's a what's a regular day like in the bubble for us, you know, outsiders? <laughs> it's a it's a very busy day. So we start our days at 7 a.m. Usually we would have our coaches meeting at 7:30, and then at nine o'clock we would have our team meeting. So that's with the players, and then 10 o'clock, uh, that's our first practice, morning practice. And then that's 10 to 12, uh, 10 a.m. to 12 noon, first practice. And then 1 o'clock to 3, another coaches meeting. And then 4 o'clock to 6, practice again. And then we end the day with a coaches meeting. So, and usually our coaches meeting it ends at 12 p.m. Eh? Mm. At uh, 12 a.m., 12 midnight na. So, it's a tiring day, but then it's very fulfilling, of course, yeah. learning from all these coaches. No, so, basically, kasi parang, while you guys are, when there's no practice, chill lang yung mga players, di ba? Mm. So, basically, yung, mas, mas mahaba pa yung time mo as a coach, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. Mas yeah, okay. mahaba talaga. It's the players get the rest. Get the light yeah, down. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Now I wanted to know the dynamic. I mean, obviously we don't expect you to be like the tipong 
you get to call the shots I don't know with how young you are and um, how new you are to the coaching thing but you know what's your role on the coaching staff um, I, both I guess yung with Gilas and with um, Tom and Tex so uh, I'm the I'm in charge of the data analytics so I'm the statistician for Tom okay. and Tex and Gilas I'm also a the assistant video coordinator for Talk and Text and Gilas as well. So, yeah, and I I teach also. I teach on the court because uh, I know the system. I know the system of Coach Tab. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I saw, well, yung, parang yung recent post mo was like, ikaw yung example pa, eh, the dribbling and, and stuff like that, I think. Okay. Um, now, yung... Um, with how young you are, um, do you think that helps you or hinders you as a coach? Or, you know, maybe both in, in different ways? Well, I guess both because, you know, it helps me because I get, uh, I get, I get the first-hand experience of what it's like to be as a coach, you know, as a coach and from the eyes of the player as well, kung paano sila, uh, how, how do they prepare for practice, how do they prepare for games? It helps me understand the player better. For for me, like as a coach, also it's important to know uh, to have a deeper understanding of how players uh, manage themselves. Uh, it also hinders me because you know uh, I'm 21 years old, so not a lot of people will, not a lot of players will, you know, listen to me. So it for me, it's all about you know earning the respect and. Through earning the respect, it comes with hard work. It, uh, me, I just do my job. I try to do my job well. I try to put in the work, and then I, for me, I think that's how I can gain the respect also, which uh, throughout the months, throughout the years, has gained me as well. So it's good. Yeah. Well, I'd like to think, kasi parang, um, you know, because you're so young, like the other players are still able to treat you as, yeah, parang. Uh, it's a lot easier to treat you as a friend, I would say. Um, but how does that translate? Because I think it would be advantageous. Like you can tell the other coaches, the older coaches, like, um, okay, this is probably what they're thinking. This is what they're going through. As a as basically in batch mate, especially with how young the Gila's team has been this uh, these past two um, these past two legs, right? Um, but how does that translate with your in the human coaches meeting? Like, um, do they treat you as you know, like as a kid, but like do they treat you as someone that's not that experienced or or is your opinion really given a lot of weight? Oh uh they're really how do I say this. Um they really make me part of the team of the coaching staff. So whatever I say, uh they put into consideration also. So they know that I'm inexperienced, pa. But then, what I say, they could, they could, they take, they, hey, sorry. <laughs> they take note of what I say also. So, at least, parang, whatever I say, hindi siya parang mema lang. Mm. I try to make it as substantial as possible. Because uh, for me, syempre, it's intimidating to work. Uh, to work with coaches very you know with very successful coaches it's, it's hard and intimidating but then uh i just have to put in the work and you know uh just help in whatever way i can yeah okay now so we talked about young um young age factor but now i wanted to talk about the experience factor so um i guess but what are the advantages and the disadvantages with being a coach that maybe not, but you didn't get to play um, team A, you didn't get to play PBA, but now you're, you're coaching PBA players, you're coaching Gilas players. Um, and there are a lot of, there are, there have been coaches that have done that. You know, the first name that comes to mind is coach Nash Rosella. Um, I know he didn't play in college, but um, he's, he's very successful right now, both in the UAP and the PBA. So given that, and given parang you're in the same situation, like what are the advantages and disadvantages of, of, of being in that situation compared to coaches that may have been former players at those levels? Well, first advantage is you 
you get to play the game more. And I think that's the most important part if you want to become a coach. You get to learn and understand the game more because naglaro ka eh. like for that whole time naglaro ka. And for me, this advantage ko da, this advantage ko is that I have to double up the effort to learn the game because I didn't play that much. I only played for around 16 years. Uh, yeah, 16 years. So from there, I really have to catch up, you know. Uh, marami na silang natutunan uh, through playing. I just have to double up the effort on, you know, have a deeper understanding on how the game is played and how we should play it. Do you, do you think that, for example, if, when I'm sure when you have kids or like I've talked to my friends that when we have kids, for sure we're going to make them play basketball. Like there's no, it's, it's not even an argument. <laughs> so from a young age, pa lang, we're, we're definitely going to make them play. Um, I want to know your thoughts. Do you think that would apply to coaching? Like if I, if, if you start coaching at a young age, would it help more or, you know, what's the, what's the trade off with that? I think, uh, I don't think for me, I don't think it's advantageous to coach right away because you really have to play. You have to play the yeah. game. There are certain levels of competition that you need to know that you need to understand in order to, you know, flourish your skill set as a coach. And for me, I didn't play a uh, professional ball, but then I'm trying to learn how the dynamics are, yeah. uh, what kind of factors are needed in order to, you know, fulfill a team and how to be a better coach. So yeah, I think like uh, playing more, playing basketball more rather than coaching at a young age, I think it's more beneficial because first-hand experience, again, uh, it's all about the reps. As Coach Tab would say, so yeah, yeah. Okay, no, exactly, exactly. Um, so, um, I'm glad that you brought up Coach Tab. What was it like, um, learning from Coach Tab? Because your batch, um, when you came into college, Coach Tab nakagad, di ba? Because kami may Coach Bo year pa kami first year ata namin. So once you came in, and you're already a student manager first year pa lang, right? So what was it like learning from Coach Tab? I guess, um. It's different than parang yung first year niya, because like you don't know what to expect. Like if you came in, let's say yung nag two championships, nag had one championship nga lang, parang you're there's already like okay, whoa, this is this guy. But like yung first year niya palang, uh, we'll start with that first. Yung parang you don't know what to expect. How did how did he? I guess get the trust of the team, get the confidence of the team. Well, you could just see it in his demeanor like every time he talks every time he explains something he knows what he's talking about so his attention to detail that's what separates him i think from a lot of coaches his attention to detail was on point and is still on point until now so yeah you know as a player before just learning from him every single move counts You know, every single dribble counts, every single pass counts, every single shot counts. So, you know, just setting up for a, a pick and roll, that's crucial already. Uh, making a bounce pass or a chest pass, we, we've already talked about that before. Uh, and then being a manager also uh, under Coach Tab, he made me realize uh, how I could contribute more to the team. So... He made me realize that I shouldn't, you know, uh, close my door uh, on just becoming a manager. But then I can be more than just a manager, you know, step out of my comfort zone. So he taught me that. And now as a coach, he just taught me to understand the game more, to learn right now. You know, we've been talking in the bubble the past, uh, past month. I've just been listening to him, you know, everything he said, everything he explains and hopefully i can pass pass that on to other players and other coaches as well as i continue my coaching career so coach tab was um i guess would you say he was very hands on with like the whole the whole thing because you you were saying like i would imagine there are some coaches that are like okay i'm going to come to practice i'm coaching these players um talk to the coaches but like you were saying that he was talking to the managers how 
I guess how wide was his um, co- um, not coverage, but like he was really managing or like looking at the whole thing. Is that right? Well, yeah, because uh, well, he ha- he has a lot of experience, you know, internationally. Uh, so he wanted us, you know, the Ateneo, the Ateneo team. He wanted us to become a world class team. Yeah. So from the t- stats, uh, video, he talked to me about that, and then I passed it on to my manager team as well. You know, okay, we should do this. So mm-hmm. we should step up our game, and you know, uh, and. Our, in our minds as managers, we just wanted to help out the team win another championship. But yeah. through that, we had to start in practice, you know, one practice at a time, then one game at a time, and then boom. Okay, uh, uh, this one was, okay, this is on top of head, something that I've always been curious about with, with um, the Ateneo system. Um, you have all these really, really good players individually. Yeah. You have the, these really, really good players individually. And it's... Um, it's not that far off for anybody here in the Philippines. Parang if you're really good, you're gonna you're gonna want to score as as quick and as easy as you can. So how did how did this system of Ateneo, which is very clearly I would say the most patient system um, in Philippine basketball, how how do you tell these amazing individual players to say, okay, we can we can just you know run the whole system. We can look at every option. You don't have to force any shot. But how did he instill, or like, how did the whole Ateneo program instill that into the players, considering how good they are individually? Well, uh, I remember we talked about uh, in our one in one of our team meetings, we talked about servanthood. So servanthood is just is to serve the people around you, you know. So on the court, off the court, that's our mentality, servanthood. So on the court, how do we serve? Okay. I set a good screen for my teammate. I may I'll make a good pass for my teammate. You know, and just following the principles he instilled in us, like uh, the offensive defensive principles he taught us. You know, just putting that into heart. Uh, and just doing our roles. You know, doing our roles as a player, as a manager, and as a coach, so that everything will become sync and we're all connected. Okay. Um. So aside from Coach Tab, you know, um, talk and text, Elas, it's it's full of, um, amazing uh, and at least at the very least very very well established coaches. So is there any other coach na parang, um, some I wouldn't say like low key, but like someone that you weren't really um expecting to learn so much from or, um, expecting to to pick up something so important or something so something that really stuck with you uh yeah for sure yeah coach jong coach jong and chico so i think in the bubble aside from coach yuri he uh i was close to him okay because we, we bonded all the time on and off the court we did some nag weights kami sa gym lahat kumbaga kami lagi magkasama uh, and then, so yeah, what I, what he taught me was just keep it as simple as possible, but then with you know with substance. Uh, so like a defensive scheme, an offensive scheme. Or he he'll approach me and then Sandro ganito ah, ganit will do this, okay? And then you know he just made it simple lang. How, mm. uh, like how complex our scheme may be taught it to me in a more you know simplified way so that i could build up from that from the system so yeah coach jong just taught me you know keep keep things as simple as possible okay um okay so before we uh, well, almost done but um i just have this quick segment that i always do with all my guests so it's called change court change sport so if you had to pick um another sport that you would want to try i don't know if you want to be playing it or coaching it but just in a in a in a hypothetical situation where you would be able to try it um what would it be uh football or soccer yeah Foot- soccer sure. okay okay why because why football 
I love FIFA. I love playing FIFA. I don't know if I'm good at it. <laughs> want to play, you know, game. <laughs> uh, yeah, football for sure. Because it's a, it's a team sport as well, and you know, teamwork. Love teamwork. <laughs> Okay, um second last one. Um who uh, obviously you're surrounded by a lot of Philippine athletes or basketball athletes, but um who would be your favorite athlete from another sport? Another sport. Internationally, Neymar. Yeah, I love how he plays, you know, flashy guy. You know how mm. I play <laughs> major flashy. Guy. So <laughs> and also Locally, you know, Alex Ayala, you know, what she's oh, yeah, doing for is sure. incredible. What she's doing is incredible. Her at number two, and then at such a young age, it's inspiring also for me, you know. Uh, being young is not a hurdle in a way. Kumbaga, it just gives us more time to work. For sure. Uh, okay, so I guess just to end, uh, just a few more questions. Um, okay, so in... In general, like in a normal situation or like kung walang pandemic, obviously, what 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 would you suggest to people um, that want to become a coach? Um, parang how can they learn or how can they study or learn to become a coach? Well, first, you have to watch a lot of film. Uh, throughout the lockdown, I've watched hun- uh, yeah more than 100 games. And uh, I also have my hard drive full of uh, UAP games. So just, you know, to remember our principles and just to learn from that and build build uh, some thoughts and ideas from that in order for me to progress as a coach as well. So yeah, uh, the, I think my message, my message to all aspiring coaches is to keep working hard, you know, at a time like this. Uh, cherish the time to learn about the game, uh, have an open mind and an open heart for us to have a deeper understanding of the game and life itself. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's our passion and love for the game that drives us as coaches. And with that passion and love and in anything we do, uh, the, that is where we find our purpose in this world and in this life. So, yeah. And I mean, okay, that's also something that can be done right even right now with the pandemic and everything. It's not I mean, you can you can be watching a lot of film. You can actually probably watch more film now that you can't really go out, no. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, okay. I'm just trying to take advantage of the time that I have at home, you know. Uh just keep on working, you know, and enjoying the process. Yep. Okay. Um, so I guess that's it. I think that's all I got. Yeah. Um, so once again, that was Mr. Sandra Seriano. I'm going to proclaim that he is the youngest ever member of the Gila's coaching staff. I think it's a fair assumption, but yeah, once again, thanks Sandra for, for guesting. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below, and, um, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks.